Today I'll be going over Console and Meerkat. It's a fundamental technology within the Meerkat API. Console commands are how most modules within Meerkat trigger events in other modules. These operations are easily registered within the code, so plugins as well as native modules easily define these bits of code. This means that there are far more console commands than there are access to those within the graphical user interface. First, accessing the console. There are two methods of accessing the console within the graphical user interface. First, we open the console window. This is the console window. Secondly, there is a pane which accesses the console as well. The final method is not to access it with the graphical user interface at all, but simply installing Meerkat with pip Now I'm launching Meerkat, the script with the minus ZC commands. The Z will suppress the GUI and the C will give us the console. Now note in lowercase Z, I can start the GUI. Now notice that the console here, the console here and the console window itself all run on the same bit of code. So accessing one will access them all. In addition, the key binds themselves run console commands. So for example, the key F7 will run Windows open minus O controller. So if I press F7 on my keyboard, it runs window open minus O controller and opens the controller. In addition, this means that the key binds loaded up in the key settings that you can define yourself. They can also be defined directly in the console window. For example, if we did bind control plus P and we wanted to bind this to something that simply ran the laser all the way from start to finish, we would do plan, clear, copy, preprocess, validate, blob, preopt, optimize, spool. Now, when we check bind, we see that the bind of control P, which should be located about here, is now bind to plan, clear, copy, preprocess, validate, blob, preopt, optimize, spool. These are the different steps in, uh, in execute job. So now if we simply do control P, it executed the job. It doesn't have anything in it, so it'll just show up a little beep there. In addition to this, the console commands are used internally to trigger events from one module to another. So when I click the execute job window, we see that it ran the window command to open the execute job window. In addition to this, it ran plan zero copy preprocess. These are the first two steps in the planning stage. So the first one copies it and then it applies the preprocess, which allows any of the jobs to be executed here. And you see that when we push the button, all it's doing is executing plan commands. So this ran plan validate, this runs plan job and preopt, this runs plan optimize, and then spool runs plan spool. The execute job window itself doesn't do any work. It simply runs the various plan commands that are defined within the core modules. This means that you can plan and execute jobs without a graphical user interface with simply access to the console. Most of Meerkat works in this fashion. The GUI is mostly a visual way to execute the underlying console commands. This means that plugin modules, which are able to automatically register within the Meerkat kernel space, can define new commands. These commands can then be accessed by the keybinds, the console, the graphical user interfaces, etc. Now, a core example of this is the camera window, which is itself a plugin. If I run Meerkat without Meerkat camera installed or OpenCV, you'll notice that the camera icon is gone as well as the camera pane. In addition to these lacking, the actual underlying camera command is no longer a registered command within the base context. Pip install Meerkat. Okay. 
This will install not only Meerkat, but the camera module as well as OpenCV. Now, not only do we have the camera module, but the camera function works. Now with the camera module installed, we can access the camera, which we see itself is displaying an image, but it also provides us with certain buttons. We can tell that what these buttons do by pressing them and seeing what they do in the console. So when I loaded up the window, it loaded up with Camwin 1 and then Camera 1 Start. You can load up any Camwin. This limit on the number of cameras is artificial. So if we select Update Image, it updates the background. When we export a snapshot, it exports a snapshot here. If we disconnect, reconnect, we see it does camera one, stop, start. When we close the window, we see it does camera one, stop. This is helpful to us in case we wanted to run console commands that do the same thing as that window without loading up the window. So we do camera one, start, camera, one background and we see that it changes the background let me remove the background with a double click camera one background now this is the background loaded up from the camera without loading it now we can say bind space camera one background now whenever i press space it'll update the background and we want something more automatic than that there is a timer command. Now, timer commands are part of the uh, console. They require a couple items. It's a string time and duration between the time and then the console command that the timer is running. So we do timer, zero, two, and then camera, one, background. Now, every two seconds, it will do camera one background, and we can see that it's updating some of the pixels here. There's a pretty stationary picture to demonstrate it, but knowing how console works allows us to create new functions and capabilities within the uh, Meerkat architecture. All right, we can turn the timer off by doing timer star, which does all timers, and do off. Sometimes the timers are spammy, so if we wanted to say do the same timer, but without the uh, repeating of the camera one background, if we do a dot before then, it will suppress the command from being echoed. So it will still run camera one background every two seconds. However, it will not re repeat the camera one background, so it will simply update quietly in the path. We dive timer, it will list our timers. We have timer one doing camera background forever each two seconds. Now the console commands themselves use pipelines to allow chaining of commands based on the context of the previous command. For example, fill. Fill assigns, accepts a color but operates on element objects. And the circle command the circle command creates a circle within the meerkat scene. So if we type in circle zero zero two inch fill blue. This will create a circle centered at zero zero with a radius of uh, two inches and then that will chain into the command which is fill and then fill it with a color blue. This created us a large blue circle. Now the cut command has two functionalities. First it does it creates an operation cut and secondly it creates it has a functionality within clipboard. So let's go ahead and delete this. And then we do circle zero zero two two fill uh, two inch fill blue cut. And then let's add in a couple of these options here. So let's go ahead and do a cut with a speed. The 
Uh, dash dash speed is the full optional item. And then we'll, let's do it at three uh, millimeters a second. So now it created the blue circle and it added to the blue circle this cut command. It added to the it added the blue circle to the cut command at a speed of three millimeters a second. So let's say we do this and we also do a plan and export it to a plan. Now, if we go into the execute laser project, we'll see that we only have cut. I have multiple operations here, but because the plan operation had something in it, it wasn't deleted when it moved. So if we did plan copy, we would now have a copy of all of these operations that it loaded up from before. Now for our use case here, what we have to note is that plan as a command takes in an operation, which is what cut put out. So fill takes in an element and outputs an element. Cut, in this case, takes in an element and puts out an operation. And plan takes in an operation and moves it into the planning stage. So we go from element to operation and then operation to plan. The final command in plan that we usually do is spool, which actually goes from plan into a spooler, which is actually a device that can be registered. So for example, if we did uh, circle four inch, four inch, located at four inch, four inch of a one inch radius, we filled that in as blue. We put this in a cut operation with a speed of 20. Then we put this in a plan and our plan, we don't need copy, pre-process, validate. We should actually put it into a blob so it becomes cut code. And then we put it into a spool and then we call this spool nine. So this will take our element object, which is the circle we create here, fill it with blue, which is also an elements operation, which then transitions in the cut, which creates a cut operation here. The cut operation then gets filled into plan, which is in our planner. And then that does a blob and a spool nine. So it will load up and automatically spool in the spool nine. So if we load up here, we shall note that we actually have a spooler nine, which contains this cut code. Now there's no actual device attached to this spooler. So there's nothing that'll read it out or do anything with it. Now, rather than put it in spooler nine, which does not exist or have a device, if I check uh, my device list, I can see that I have a item on, uh, on zero for my device, which does spool one, uh, then it registers the driver, uh, which is of type LHY Studios and output and registers that as a new output, which is LHY Studios. So if we do this and we send it to spool one, so let's do four inch, four inch, uh, blue cut speed. Okay. And then this will run from plan to blob to spool. And executing that. We can go from having nothing in here to uh, creating a circle, filling it in with a blue color, adding it to a cutter operation, putting the cutter operation in the planner, and putting the blobbed plan into the spooler. Now the really important thing about this is from the console, we did all of that without having to use any of the graphical user interface. We can simply run that command and it will send the data to the spooler accordingly. Now this covers the console commands and what they are and why you'd want to use them. However, what the actual commands themselves are can be checked with help. Since all the commands get registered and re-registered by different modules, they can change significantly from version to version and depending on the modules and plugins you may have installed. So let's quickly look at the various elements of this through uh, 
elements. So let's say we want to do something with rectangles. So there is a command in elements called rectangle, which creates a rectangle to the scene. So if we type in help rect, it will give us the additional uh, help on the rectangle. Note that the way to read this is a uh, rectangle. X is a length. Lengths are items that can have inches and millimeters, centimeters, etc. Anything approved by the CSS length function. They have an X position, a Y position, a width, and a height. Now, in addition to these, these are the arguments for X position, Y position, width, and height. You can also have RX and RY. This is the rounded corners and minus R and minus Y. So let's go ahead and do rect and let's put this at uh, two inches, two inches, and let's give it a width of uh, three inches, three inches, and let's do minus X, Y, and let's do 0 0.5 inch and 0 0.7 inch. Now this created a rectangle which is located here at the uh, position I specified, which is two inches, two inches. It has a width of three inches by three inches, and it has rounded corners, which are more rounded in the X direction than the Y direction. Now, in addition, we can do another one of these, and then let's say translate by two inches. Now, what this did is it created the exact same rectangle it did before, but then in, did the translate command as well. So if I do help translate, translate is sort of a pan of an object. So what it does is it moves the object over by the specified amount and I only specified the X amount. So it required an X and a Y, but some for some commands you do not need both. You can simply use one. However, if this command is omitted, then you can't chain other commands correctly. So if I did translate two inch and then I did rotate, which is another uh, affine transformation uh, routine, and I did 0 0.1 turn, then it would say 0 0.1 turn is not a registered command in this context because this is a missing its uh, zero. So if I give my X is two inch, my Y is zero, then that completes all of the arguments in the translate command and allows you to chain them together. So this uh, translates over by two inches and then rotates by 10% uh, of the way around, one tenth of a turn. This should show the power of chaining elements together and allowing modular additional commands to occur in the pipeline, converting and altering the data. So for one last example, let's create a text object with text. Thanks for watching. Then we're going to scale this because the default text is actually pretty small. We have to provide both elements because we're going to chain them all together. So it's scale X, then scale Y. Render will take a text element and turn it into an image element. And Vectrace Vector Ace will take the image element and turn it into a vector element by uh, tracing it. Now let's translate the resulting item into the field by 50%, 50%. Now the lengths here are the same as the, uh, C, uh, the SVG lengths, so they're going to be 50% into the bed. And since the text elements appear in the corner, with their center over uh, zero, zero. This will put it in the direct center. And let's move this into an engrave. And let's set the uh, speed and power. Let's go speed of 35, power of 500. That'll be 500 PPI. We're going to put this in a plan. And then we are going to convert the plan uh, to blob so that it do goes in the cut code. And we are going to put this into spooler one because spooler one is the default spooler that I have that uh, accesses my laser.